Okay, the first three examples that I'm going to cover are from module 8, which is all of the power and the exponent rules. Then the last three examples are from the polynomial section, which is module 9. Okay, so there's really only six total that I have six or seven people that haven't done them. All the other ones, it's like one or two people haven't done it yet. Okay. Um, so for these, they're just kind of the big ones when you get to the end of module eight. So the first thing you want to do, and this is what I do. The first thing I do is if I have external exponents, like outside the parentheses, I always apply those first. Then I take care of negative exponents. And then I start reducing or combining things like that, okay, using all of our rules. So the first rule I'm going to use is just giving everybody this cube. So I'm going to say this should be 3 cubed, this should be y to the negative 2 cubed, and then y squared cubed. And when you cube them, for the numbers, you actually have to cube it, right? Mm -hmm. But when you have bases and an exponent, this thing here, a base and an exponent, it's a different kind of rule, right? It's the power rule. So for here, I would have to do 3 times 3 times 3, which is 27. Here, because I have a base and an exponent, this one didn't have an exponent, right? I have to multiply the exponents. So I get y to the negative 6. And down here, the same thing. I have to multiply those exponents. So I get y to the positive 6. Then the next thing I do is I don't like to have the negatives because the negatives start to get confusing when you're adding and subtracting stuff, right? Because when you're multiplying stuff, you add the exponents, right? But negatives end up subtracting, right? And then when you're dividing, you subtract, but if you have a double negative, you end up adding, right? So it gets really, really weird. <laughs> so what I like to do is not have any negative exponents whatsoever before I continue, okay? And there's a rule that tells me these two things. So it tells you that if you have a negative exponent, you could write it at the bottom with a positive exponent, or if it is at the bottom with a negative exponent, you could write it at the top. They don't put it over one, but essentially it's over one if there's no fraction, right? So basically what a negative exponent does is it just switches its position over the fraction bar. So if I wanna get rid of that negative exponent, what it means is that this term is gonna now go downstairs. Mm -hmm. So then I have 27, the y to the six that was already there, and now I'm gonna have a y to the positive six. Moving it is now make it positive. And again, you remember those little analogies I use? I always think of like an apartment complex. You've got a, a tenant upstairs. They're not happy upstairs, right? They're being very negative. So you move them to where they want to go. <laughs> and now they're happy. So they're no longer negative anymore. Okay. Yes, you should. If you have letters that are the same, you do have to combine them. So my last step would be to combine those together. And when we're multiplying, we just add the exponents, right? So then that's where we get the 12. And that's finally finished because I don't have any more bases that are the same. I have 27 as a base and y is a base. And nothing matches, so we know we're done. So the same thing's going to apply to example two. It's just there's a lot more stuff going on. Bless you. So, and I'm going to kind of skip this step, okay? And the way I'm going to skip this step is I'm just going to jump straight into that step. And all I do is if I have numbers, then I have to actually cube the numbers. But if I have bases, what am I doing with those exponents? Multiplying. Multiplying them. So you don't need to literally write this step out. It's more of a visual thing. Okay? So if I take this 3 and I give it to that guy, six. it's going to become m to the 6. If I take the 3 and give it to the 4, I'm going to oh. multiply. And then if you multiply those. And then if you multiply these. And then if you multiply those, negative 12. negative 12. And so notice I didn't have to say each one's going to get cubed. I just cubed each one, right? Then the next thing I like to do is move all the negative people. So this one is going to go downstairs. This one is going to go upstairs. And this one is going to go upstairs. And once you move them, they're no longer unhappy, right? They're no longer negative. So these two guys went to the top. So I'm going to write m to the 9 and n to the 12 on top. And the p went to the bottom. So p15 at the bottom. And then now, if you have any bases that are the same, you have to put them together, right? So these are all multiplied. 
So if I multiply the m's together, I have to add those exponents. And if I multiply the n's together, I have to add those exponents. And do you have any more bases that are the same? No. No. So you can't go any further with this. This is it. Okay. But that's just my method. I mean, you could do whatever you wanted. You could have moved things in here before you cube stuff. You could have done all your properties in here before you cubed anything. It's just up to you how you want to do it. This is just the way I do it. I get rid of this big parentheses first, then I get rid of the negatives, and then I go from there. Okay, let's see what else we've got. I got one more of these exponent thingies. So we have one like the ones we've seen, but then we have to multiply it by something extra, right? So it's like another extra step. So the first thing I like to do is take care of this, and then we'll figure that in later, okay? So I'm gonna cube everybody. Now remember, when you cube the number bases, you actually have to cube it, right? Mm -hmm. Two times two times two, which is eight. But when you have a base that's not a number, you just multiply the exponents. So this becomes x to the six, y to the negative three, and z to the what? That's a two, by the way. Is that a two? Oh, uh -huh. that's a negative six. Negative six. And then I'm gonna just change it to a little dot, and I'm gonna write y three, and z2 instead of parentheses right because I got rid of the first parentheses and there's really no reason for these parentheses to be there other than to tell me that they're multiplying with each other okay so I decided to write a dot instead of double parentheses so now I like to move all the negative guys right so this guy is gonna move downstairs this guy is gonna move upstairs and then what is it gonna look like I'm gonna have eight x to the 6. I also have a y3 upstairs, and now I'm going to have a z6 upstairs. And at the bottom, I had a z squared at the bottom, but now I'm also going to have a y cubed at the bottom. Okay? okay. Now you could use your, your, I don't like to use that rule. You have a, the quotient rule that says you take the top exponent minus the bottom exponent. Mm -hmm. I do not like that rule. I'd rather people, and I'm not supposed to say the word cancel either, but <laughs> I like to cancel, quote unquote, cancel things, but really what you're doing is you're reducing, okay? So you know how when you have a fraction that's like 14 over 28? Like, and you reduce this by 7 and get 2, right? So, but eventually you're like marking this out, and so that's why we say cancel, right? Um, but it's the same thing with this. I can reduce these by however many I can. And you have to go with the lower exponent. So I do see that I have y's on top and bottom, right? And so what I like to do is who's got the smaller exponent? This one coincidentally has the same exponent, right? So they're basically just going to wipe each other out. Because when I reduce the top by y cubed, guess what? It goes away. When I reduce the bottom by y cubed, it goes away, okay? Now the z's also, I have some on top, some on bottom, but you cannot cancel six of them because you only have two downstairs, right? Mm -hmm. So you're better off canceling two of them. So if I cancel two, these are gonna be gone. But if I cancel two here, how many am I gonna have left? Four. Four still. And that's it. I don't think I have anything else that needs to be canceled. So I have eight x to the six. Now I have z to the four on top. And do I have anything downstairs? No, no, no. So it's like there's a little invisible one, but when you write your answer, you do not need to write the fraction. This will be your answer. Okay. But when everything cancels, what happened when the seven canceled? It turned into a one, turned right? A one, yeah. So when I canceled these puppies, essentially they turned into a one. But visually, it looks like it just disappears, right? Okay. So again, I like to apply the outside exponents first, then get rid of all the negatives, and then either combine them by adding the exponents or start reducing them by canceling them out, okay? Those are just the steps that I take whenever I do that. You could do any rule at any time, but if I stay consistent, then it helps me to do the problems. Yes? Okay, so you take that problem and you had your own. <clears throat> Say you had your your z to the six at the bottom. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And then your Z to the two at the top. The top. So would that that Z? I could only still cancel two. Two of them out. So, so then I would have Z four at the, at the bottom. bottom. That's what I was mm-hmm. going to ask. And so I would have to write it at the bottom. You have to write that because now that's at the right. bottom. It's no more going to the top. Right. right. Okay. All exactly. Right. Gotcha. Only if everything at the bottom goes away are you allowed to not write the bottom. Okay. 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 So that's multiplying these things. Then the next section in module nine starts getting into um, polynomials. So like what is the degree? How many terms does it have? Can you multiply them together? Can you add them together? Can you minus them? Things like that, right? And the one that people usually get stuck on is the division. Okay. So there's two types of division, um, but I have three examples. But there's division by a monomial, which is just one term, no plus or minus in there to make it two terms or more. And then there's division, which we call long division, where you do have more than just one term and you have to do it a whole nother way. When it's just one term, you are perfectly okay with dividing each one of these guys by that term. And then essentially what you've done is you've turned this problem into like three of these, right? Where you gotta reduce everything, okay? So if I reduce, what is 16 divided by four? four. Or if I reduce them, let's, let me get out another color and we'll reduce. If I reduce this by four, I get one. If I reduce this by four, I get four. How many of these can I reduce? Two. Only two. That means all would go away here, but how many would I be left one with here? Still one. How many X's could I reduce by? One. Just one, which means this one would go away, but I would still have one down here. So when I'm done with this, what all do I have at the top? You only got four at the top. Just the four. And then you have V and X at the bottom. And one V and one X at the bottom. Put my minus sign. Now what number can I reduce the numbers by? Four. Four, so reduce this one by four, you get one. Reduce this one, you get six. How many of these can I reduce? Three. So those are all gone, and here I'll have four. And how many X's? Two. Those will be gone, but here I'll have four. So is there anything left at the bottom? No. It's a one, but we don't need that, yeah, right? Need that, right? So this just becomes six, V to the fourth, X to the fourth. Oh, then put my plus sign. Okay. Now the numbers. Again, we can reduce by four. So I get one, and I get three. How many V's can we reduce? Three, three, so then how many will I have left at the top? Three, two. two. And how many X's can I reduce? Two, three, so how many X's will I have three. at the top? Three. So I end up with the number three, and then V to the two, and X to the three. Mm -hmm. And this is it. I can't reduce that anymore, so it's just stuck like that as a fraction. <laughs> oh, wow. I looked at that. I looked it does. It looks intimidating. I know one thing that I used to do back when we would, I would get a book because now everything's like online. But even then, I could still do it. I used to go to the back, like the teacher would say, "Oh, we're gonna go all the way up to chapter 10 i I'll go look at chapter ten. I'm like, "Oh my God, what is that?" And then when it was semester was over, I'd be like, "Hey, I understand what this stuff is now. <laughs> That's kind of cool." <laughs> but just at the beginning, I would always do that. Look at the back just to see, and it looks like foreign. But then when you go later, you're like, even if you don't understand that chapter, you still kind of know what the symbols mean and what it's trying to say. And that's a whole bunch of improvement from the beginning, just not knowing anything. Okay, so these two are a little bit different because now I'm not dividing by one term, right? There's a plus sign in the middle, which means I'm dividing by two terms. So I cannot do it the, the quick way, right? The easy short way where you just put it underneath everybody and you're done. This one literally has the phrase long division in the description, in the title, okay? Because you do have to do long division and it's, it's long, okay? This one you have to set it up like you do when you divide numbers, okay? So just kind of over here is my scribble scribble. If I were to divide, um, if I were to divide this by four, 
right? That's kind of like what you see. You see this big giant thing divided by a smaller thing, right? If I were to do that, how would I do it on paper? Do you remember how to do the long division process? Four, you put the four uh -huh. on the outside. Four on the outside. Then the one, one, this big thing on the inside, yeah. right? That's the exact same process that we're going to do over here. So we're going to take the 3x plus 5 and divide it into this thing here. Now, one thing you have to make sure when you're doing this, and the book will tell you, and coincidentally, we got lucky. If you have any missing terms, you have to fill them in with zeros, or you have to like scoot over a space and leave an empty spot there, okay? It, because it's kind of like your place values, right? If you're talking about the number 10, you don't just write one, right? You write one and then a zero to fill in that, that number value, okay, that spot. So the reason why I mention this is because two things need to happen. This needs to be in descending order, and this needs to be in descending order. The division will not work unless they are in descending order. And what do I mean by that? I mean that the highest exponent on x goes first, and then the exponent of x should be decreasing until you get to the constant, okay? So for this one, it's fine, because I have an exponent of an imaginary one, right? Mm -hmm. And then I have no x's, right? So one x, zero x's. That's in descending order. Here I have squared x's, one x's, and then no x's, right? So this one's also in descending order. Not to mention, I don't have anybody missing. But let's pretend the problem was just 6x squared plus 20. Then I would have my squares, but then I wouldn't have my regular x's, right? They'd be missing. So then I would have to put a space here, or I would have to literally write zero x's in this problem, okay? And it doesn't happen to me, coincidentally, it doesn't happen on either one of these problems. And it may not happen to you in 410, but I promise you it will happen to you in college algebra, okay? So just keep that in mind. They have to be in descending order, and if you have anybody missing, leave a space, okay? Now, you, now when we rearrange them, so you're basically saying they gotta be in descending order, uh -huh. the greatest to the least. Mm -hmm. So well, do we have to worry about any sign change in between there? Like They uh, won't change, but whatever sign is in front of the number, that sign goes with the number. Yes, like it was So negative. if I were to have to put the 22 in the front, it would be positive 22, 22. in the front. Okay, right. mm -hmm. So like if that was minus 22, it would be... I would have to put negative, negative 22x 22 22 in, in the front. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Exactly. Okay. Whatever sign is in front of the number, that's the sign that's that goes the with that number. Yes, okay? okay? Okay, so this one's kind of nice because it's already ready to go. Now, what do you do when you do this one in the red? You would say, do you say, well, how many times does 4 go into all of that? No, no right? You just chop it off to the first thing that it can go into, right? Mm -hmm. Really, you do this one, but it's nothing, so you right. skip it and you go to the next one, right? Yeah. Well, it's the same thing for me. I'm going to look at my first term only, and I'm only going to look at the first term here. I like to write side work, so over here, I'm going to do that. I'm going to say, how many times does 3x go into 6x squared? This looks like a little baby version of the problems we just finished doing, right? So 6 divided by 3 is 2, and if I cancel an x, how many x's am I left with? One. Just 1. And it's, there's nothing left at the bottom anymore, right? The 3 canceled and the x canceled. So this is just a regular 2x. What happens with that 2x is it comes up here. Now, it doesn't matter if you put it over the x squareds or you put it over the x's, but just to be consistent so everything lines up, I'm going to put it over the 2x. It really doesn't matter, but I like everything to be all lined up, okay? Now, what happens when I do this over here? How many times does 4 go into 13? 3. 3, and then what do you do from there? You bring 12, 4 times 3 is 12. You do 3 times 4, and then you put the 12 four. underneath, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this 2x, but I have more than just 3x out here. I have a 5 as well, right? So I have to take that 2x and I have to multiply it by both terms out there. Now when I do that, what do we get? We get 6x squared and then we get positive 10x, don't we? Is that right? That's right. When you multiply it, okay. 6x squared. Back to the red, okay? What do you do with that 12? 
What do you mean what you do with that 12? Up here in the red. Uh, you'll draw a line under and then subtract. You that, subtract. Yeah, it's gonna be and you subtract. Yeah. So if I do the same thing here, I draw a line under it and I subtract. You have to remember what happens when you subtract polynomials. What you do is you kind of distribute that minus sign, right? And then you combine the like terms. So it's the same thing here. What I like to do is I like to tell myself, oh, I changed this to a minus and this I'm going to change to a minus. But you're always going to do whatever the opposite sign is. And I say that because if that was a minus 10x, then up here in red, I would have had to put plus, okay? And I circle it because that's the new sign. That's the one I'm going to use when I try to combine, okay? So what is 6x squared minus 6x squared? Zero. Zero. So those are going to cancel out. But then what is positive 22x minus 10x? 12x. And then over here in the red, you subtract, you get one, right? I subtracted and I got this. Mm -hmm. What do you do after that bring one? On you bring the nine down, the next guy, right? Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing here. I gotta bring down the next term. And if you have more terms, it's usually good to bring them all down because it'll get weirder in college algebra, I promise. <laughs> then you repeat the whole thing all over again, right? In the red. You would do the whole thing all over again. How many times does 4 go into 19? Put the number at the top, multiply, subtract, all of that stuff. Whole thing all over again. So I'm going to do the whole thing all over again. But now I don't have this anymore. I have 12x plus 20. So I'm going to do the first term, 12x, divided by this guy, the 3x. Don't ever worry about this second term. That's like a consequence. You'll worry about it when it comes to the distributing part. Okay? So here, what is 12x divided by 3x? 4. 4. And the x's just wipe each other out, right? So I don't have a fraction, which is good. So I put plus, because it's positive, and a 4. And now the same thing like I did with the 2x. That positive 4 has to get distributed to both of these. So I'm going to get positive 12x, and I'm going to get positive 20. And then, like we said, we have to subtract these things. So this positive is going to turn negative. This positive is going to turn negative. And then what's going to happen here? Gonna Those are going to cancel. Those are going to cancel. And I have to say something. So what do I say? Zero. Zero. So when the computer says, what is the quotient? And what is the remainder? Yes, up here is the quotient, and down here is the remainder. And it's not always zero, and I think that's why I have the next example, okay? And I'm actually going to change this problem a little bit, only because I want to put some minuses in there. That way you can see how the minuses work out, okay? Because that one had all positives, right? So we didn't really get to see the how the negatives come into play. So yes, quotient here is going to be 2x plus 4. And then my remainder is just 0. Again, later when you get to college algebra, there's something else you're going to do once you get the quotient and the remainder. Okay? But that'll be in college algebra. And we'll come back to this because the same topic will be in there again. I think a... A harder version of it the one where the stuff is missing and they're out of order and stuff like that so you'll get some practice with it later again just to kind of jog back your memory okay so here I'm gonna do the same thing I'm gonna set it up I'm gonna put the little guy 2x plus 1 on the outside and I'm gonna put the long one is it in descending order Yes. and do I have anybody missing I have three two one none right so they're all there. So I don't, any terms missing. Because you start off with the highest, which is cubed, right? Mm -hmm. Then oh, it so would have to be, right. You look at the exponent. You're looking at the exponent. Okay. What's the real word I'm supposed to say? The degree, right? Degree, The degree. So you look okay. at the term with the highest degree, degree and that right. guy goes first. Okay. And whatever that is, it basically has to count down from there, okay? But if you're missing somebody, you gotta put in a gap. But I'm good, right? Because I have exponent three, I have exponent two, I have exponent of invisible one, 
And then I have no exponents, right, for x. This guy has no x's at all, right? So I don't say 3, 2, 1, 0. I say 3, 2, 1, none. Does that make sense? Yeah. So 3x's, 2x's, 1x, and then no x's, right? Can you say that if it's not a, no, it's like that, then You'd have to rearrange them. Mm -hmm. So like if this guy had the cube, or let's say if that guy had the cube and that guy had the square, I would, would have be, to swap well, them. That would be what you were talking about. Your mm -hmm. your We'd have to put negative 11x cubed, x cubed right, first, then, then six, the positive 6x six six x squared. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. If the exponents were swapped. Okay. It might not happen yet, but it will happen when you get to college algebra. Okay. So you'll see the same problem, this long division stuff. But these, I think this is problem type one. This one's problem type two. When you get to college algebra, I throw in the problem type three, which is where they are not in the correct order and there may be stuff missing does that make sense okay so you'll see i'm just kind of forewarning you for something missing always put zero so if your squares are missing you put zero x squared because there's no x squared right if your constant is missing put plus zero for your mm -hmm. constant okay whoever's missing just put zero in front okay so I'm gonna start the same process again. Remember, you're not taking the whole thing, you're just taking the first terms. So I'm gonna take the first term, 6x cubed, and put it over the first term on the outside, 2x. 3x squared. 3x squared. So that comes over here, and I like to put it over the, three, the squares, but again, it doesn't matter, they don't have to line up. What happens to the 3x squared? You gotta multiply by the 2x plus 1. Correct. It has to, anything up here has to get multiplied by everything on the outside. So then I get 6x cubed and I get positive 3x squared. But in order to combine these, I have to minus them, right? And when you minus, it's gonna change this one to a negative and it's gonna change this one to a negative. So these will still cancel because a positive and a negative will wipe each other out, right? But what do I get when I do negative x squared minus 3x squared? Minus 14x to the 4? Min no. 14x squared. 14x squared. It's like saying you owe somebody some apples and you owe somebody else some more apples. So you just owe a bunch of still apples, right? <laughs> it doesn't change on you, the fruit. <laughs> Now that's different when you're multiplying, right? Because when you're multiplying, you are changing them. Think of like when you're breeding the plants, right? So if I'm taking a mango and an apple or whatever, it's gonna be a whole new um, plant. So then it will be a whole new exponent when you multiply. It's different, okay? I'm telling you, I think of weird things whenever, <laughs> whenever it comes to this rule stuff. Okay, so I do have to bring down, and I like to bring down all the terms, especially if you have missing terms because it'll it'll make it'll it'll cause an issue so make sure you bring them all down now let's keep going again same thing so who am i going to put on the top of this baby fraction and then who goes at the bottom 2x and so when i finish this what do i get negative 7x negative 7x so up here i have to put negative 7x which looks like a minus 7x right and then again, still distribute, but it's a negative or a minus. So what is 2x times negative 7x? Negative 14x squared. Mm -hmm. And then what's positive 1 times negative 7x? Negative 7x. And then again, I have to subtract these. So I have to change this sign to a plus, and I have to change this sign to a plus. Will the 14 still cancel each other out? Because you have a negative 14 and a positive 14, right? So they will still wipe out. But what do you get here? Positive 10 plus 7. 17x. 17 17x. 17 and then, of course, bring the next term down. I think I picked a bad number, but it's okay. I picked a bad one. Here, let me change it. Let me change this to 11. No, why can't we say 10? Because it's, look, I'm getting this number and they're not going to see that in Alex. You won't. So what, would I end up a fraction or something? It will. Which can so happen, I guess. But though, no, you won't. You won't. Uh, you no, won't. I need it. <laughs> it could happen, but if it happens, it probably isn't going to happen until you get to, like, Cal 3. It really won't ever. <laughs> okay. So then I really need to have what here? 
if this were an 11, then that means an 11 would be inside here. Yeah. I would bring down that 11. But then when I had to add 7, what would I end up with? 18. 18. Yeah. It could happen, and I would just have a fraction number out there. Okay. The only thing, the reason why I don't want to do that is because I was about to say something that is kind of true, but not always true. I can have fraction numbers here because those are just decimals, right? So you can have a fraction number up here. What you can't have up there is a fraction that has variables downstairs, okay? So if that were whatever it was before, 17, I could have, what would that be, 8.5? I could have 8.5 up here. But if this were just 17 and no x, when you go over here, you can't have x's downstairs. So let me repeat that. Let's pretend that was still a 10. And I did all this, and for some reason I got 18 or 17, whatever it was, it really wouldn't matter. 17x over 2x. The x's still wipe out, right? Mm -hmm. So if I divide the numbers, I get 8.5. That's okay. okay. However, if you have this, you would have 8.5 for the number, but you would still have an x downstairs. This, you cannot put up there. Oh, the 8.5 you could you put, put up, up there, there but, you but you can't put it up there when it has a little X downstairs. What that means is you should have stopped and whatever you had here was your remainder. Okay? So once you start trying to divide and you start getting X's at the bottom, that means whatever your previous step was, that was your last step. Okay? okay? So that's how you know like when to stop. Because when we get to college algebra, I promise you they're going to have like to the 6th power, to the 5th power, and you're to be going and going and going and then you're not going to know when to stop okay so once you start getting x's at the bottom that means you went too far okay go back so here though i don't have this this is just my little note i have 18x and 2x and what do we get there positive nine right and the x's will just wipe each other up so i'm going to put positive nine up here and then that positive 9 still has to keep getting distributed. So this will become positive 18x and positive 9. And then in order to minus, we got to change this one to negative and this one to negative. So those wipe each other out. What number do I get here? 10. Almost negative 10. Negative 10. And see, this is the situation I was going to talk about. If I try to take this and divide it by 2x, don't I get an x downstairs? which means that that's too much. I needed to stop right here, okay? That was what I was trying to get at. So that's how you know if you've gone too far. With just x out here, it's pretty easy to tell. Once you get to a constant, you're done. But when I start putting x cubed out there, x squared out there, that's when it starts getting confusing on when do you stop? Because you won't get to a constant, I promise you, okay? You'll have x's in your remainder. And so that's why it gets a little bit weird later. But for now, what is my quotient? 3x squared minus 7x plus 9. And plus 9. Is 10. Yes. Because you stop when the remainder is less than the divided. Yes, once your degree, right, the, the, the real word, <laughs> once the degree down here is lower than the degree out there, that's also when you stop. Mm -hmm. Which will play out if you tried to divide, right, and you get an x downstairs. Okay, I think that's all I had. Yep. So those were the big 